and port 63, we're now going to change gears. Come up with a different way to find feedback gains or full state feedback. This comes from calculus of variations. Now, calculus of variations is a branch of mathematics that deals with trying to optimize functionals. A functional is a function of functions. For example, if I want to go from point A to point B, I want to find out which path minimizes some functional. For example, if I want to build a road between A and B, which road is the minimum cost? If the function or the path is optimal, what that means is any deviation in the path, which is n, will result in a higher cost. Or if I take the change in cost at the optimal path, the derivative will be zero. So this is the generalized derivative for functionals. The solution to that is a fairly lengthy derivation. I won't go through it here in the lecture, but you can see it on the lecture notes. The result is that any function that minimizes that functional has to satisfy the following equation. Uh, this part right here is multiplied by n. n is your deviation. n is arbitrary. If this is zero, that means that the quantity on the inside has to be zero. That's the Euler-Lagrange equations. The second term are your endpoint constraints. If the endpoint is fixed, that means n of a equals zero, n of b equals zero. So I don't have to worry about this. If the endpoint is free, meaning I can deviate from that path at the endpoint, that means this term right here, partial back with respect to x dot, must be zero. So with the Euler-Lagrange equation and your endpoint constraints, I can find a function that minimizes some functional. Now let's do a couple examples. Let's take the uh, simplest one. Suppose I want to build a road from point A to point B. My cost function is the length of the road is how much it costs. Come up with the path that minimizes the total length of the road. Total length is the integral of dx squared plus dy squared integrated between points A and B. If I rearrange this, divide by dx, bring dx outside, I want to minimize 1 plus dy dx squared times dx. dy dx is just y prime. That means the function I want to minimize is the square root of 1 plus y prime squared. That's a very common functional. You see in calculus variations, it's simply saying minimize the length of uh, the curve. So, to find the solution, I throw that in the Euler-Lagrange equations. I note that there is no y in that equation, so I get 0. The partial respect to y prime will be this function. Since the derivative is 0, that means y prime over 1 plus y prime squared must be a constant. The denominator doesn't really matter. It's also going to be a constant. That means y prime is the constant. If I integrate both sides, that just says y equals ax plus b. This is a long, convoluted way of showing that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Well, we can actually prove that. Uh, let's do some other functionals. Suppose I want to minimize the length of a line, but weighted by x. That's the shape of a soap film. The surface area of a soap film is the radius, which is 2 pi r times the length. That's the square root of 1 plus y prime squared. So when I multiply by x, that's a soap film of two disks circling the y-axis. Another way of interpreting that is I want to build a road between two points. The cost of the road is proportional to x. The closer I get to the y-axis, the lower the cost. What road minimizes that cost? To solve that, throw your functional into the Euler-Lagrange equation. Again, there is no y, which means that minus d dx of fy prime equals 0. The partial with respect to y prime is xy prime over squared 1 plus y prime squared. Integrating, that is, has to be constant. So rearrange, solve for y prime. I get y prime is a function of x. y prime is dy dx. Bring the dx to the right, and I, I can now integrate. I've got a function of y is a function of x. That's a common trick in calculus variations. Do some algebra, rearrange it, so I just have y's on the left, x's on the right, 
Now integrate, I get y is a function of x. To integrate this function, there's a couple options. You can use the table of integrals. I personally don't like that approach because you tend to get the wrong answers. Or do substitution. Here I've got x squared minus a squared. I'm going to use the trick that's uh, cosh squared minus 1 equals sin squared. So let's do a substitution. Let's assume x is a cosh theta. So we're going to get cosh squared minus 1. Take the derivative. The derivative of x is a cinch theta d theta. Now substitute. x goes to a cosh theta. dx goes to a cinch theta times d theta. And I get cosh squared minus 1 is cinch squared. That cancels with the cinch. And I wind up with y is just the integral of a d theta, which is a times theta plus b. Now back substitute, theta is a function of x, and solve backwards, x is a function of y. This is the shape of a soap film that circles the y-axis. If you prefer soap films that circle the x-axis, which is kind of my preference, just uh, swap x and y, do a change in variable. So this is the shape of a soap film that circles the x-axis. Now, if I plug in the endpoint constraints, like I've got a, a disk of radius 5 at 0, a disk of radius 5 at 5, what's the shape of the soap film? Plug in the two endpoints. At the left endpoint, I've got y of 0 is 5, x is 0. At the right endpoint, y of 5 is 5, when x is 5. Got two equations, two unknowns. To solve, this is where MATLAB and FBIN search are useful. I'm going to guess a and b, and have MATLAB iterate until this equation balances and that equation balances. If you do that, again that's shown in the lecture notes, you wind up with the following equation. y is 1.175 cosh of x minus 2.5 over 1.175. Plot it, I get this function. That is the shape of a soap film going between these two points, where this is a disk uh, circling the x-axis, here's another disk. A couple things to note. When you find these solutions, occasionally there is no solution. That's the case of a degenerate solution or when the soap film breaks. Again, if there is no answer, the math is trying to tell you something. The challenge is trying to figure out what the math is trying to tell you. Take this point, pull it to the right, and this point will come down and touch. At that point, the soap film breaks, and the minimum solution is the degenerate solution. Form a soap film around the first ring, a line going to the second one, a soap film around the second ring. So again, if you try to solve your two equations, two unknowns, and there is no solution, it could be there is no solution, um, meaning the soap film is broken. Uh, second example. If the right endpoint is free, then instead of constraining it, I have to satisfy the second part of the Euler-Lagrange equation, fy prime is zero. What that means is taking your function of y, take the derivative with respect to y, that means that y prime equals zero at the right endpoint. So my two equations for two unknowns would be the left endpoint and the right endpoint saying that y prime equals zero, which gives you this solution. And notice what you have is at two, I've got a surface, the soap film has to be perpendicular to the surface at the boundary condition. What it looks like is there's a mirror image of the soap film to the right, um, resulting in the zero slope. So that's the shape of a soap film with the right endpoint free to move along the line x equals 2. Uh, third example. If you have an Euler-Lagrange equation with two dependent variables, it turns out the solution is the Euler-Lagrange equation has to be satisfied with respect to x and with respect to u. Uh, another variation, if there's a constraint, what you do is you add a Lagrange multiplier. Since this function equals 0, you can always add 0 to a function and not change it. So I'll just say Lagrange multiplier m times 0, meaning g, and I'll now have three Euler-Lagrange equations, one with respect to x, one with respect to u, with respect to m. Uh, to illustrate that, let's find the shape of a hanging chain. A chain is the shape that minimizes the potential energy for the chain, subject to the constraint that the length 
is fixed. In this case, I want to find a length, a chain of length 2 meters between two points 1 meter apart. To do that, the energy is just the Um, this actually be a chain in, hanging in the y, or calling this the y-axis, that the x-axis, be the height times the length, subject to the endpoint constraints, and subject to the constraint that the length is 2. Again, here I swapped x and y because it works out a little bit easier if you do that. Um, I'll add a Lagrange multiplier. This is the cost function plus my Lagrange multiplier times the constraint that the length is 2 meters. Plug it into the Euler Lagrange equations, and I get, um, since there's no y, fy prime is a constant, meaning that y prime satisfies this equation. y prime is dy dx, bring the dx right, and integrate both sides. y has to satisfy that this loop will be this integral. Um, doing a change in variable uh, to clear out the x plus m squared, let's say x plus m is z. I then get this equation. Do another change in variable. Z is A cosh W, meaning DZ is A cinch W DW. Um, throw it in, and I suddenly have something I can integrate. Cosh squared minus 1 is cinch. These cancel, and I just have A. So integral Y is just integral of ADW, which is AW plus B. Now going backwards, substituting to get z, substituting to get x. This is the generalized form of a hanging chain where gravity is in the minus x direction. Swap the variables x and y. This is the shape of a hanging chain where gravity is in the minus y direction. Plugging in the endpoint constraints, at the left endpoint I'm at 0, 1. When x is 1, y is 1. And the length is 2 meters, meaning this has to be satisfied. Throw that in MATLAB, meaning I'm going to guess A, B, and M. Calculate the three equations. They should all equal zero. If they're not zero, the equations don't balance. Return the sum squared error, and let MATLAB find A, B, and M to minimize that. And with FN search, it'll find the answer. What that means is this is the shape of a hanging chain going between a blank two going between two points one meter apart. With that, you can probably solve the first couple problems on the homework. That's calculus of variation. In our next lecture, we'll look at how do you apply that to feedback control, finding feedback gains.